tell the price. Yeah, I'm just about to do that. I'll just let them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Get up and go stand there. Okay. Right. Adrian, quiet, please, just so I can give you a couple of instructions. So, a couple of things. If you got an email from me or you know that your parents got an email to say that you're getting something today, please make sure you're sitting down in the front five or six rows, preferably year 13s at the front, then 12s, then 11s. If you are getting a prize today, this is how it's going to work. Please read, keep an eye on the screen. If your name pops up, doesn't, don't wait for it to be read. Stand up and go and wait this side. Rev Steph will be waiting over here for you. Once you receive your award, you go the other side. Mrs. Nairn will be waiting for you. You wait there just the same as always with the applause, and then she'll send you away. Okay? So don't wait for your names to be read. Get up and go straight that side, please. That means if we do that, we can get out of here on time. Okay? Thanks.
Senior School, please stand. Please be seated. Can I move this? Is it going to? Is it right? Tēnā koutou katoa. Very warm welcome to Assembly this afternoon, Senior School. At our last Senior School Academic Bar Assembly, you may remember that I spoke to you of the classical Greek myth of Sisyphus, who was forced to spend an eternity rolling the same boulder up a hill each day, only to have it fall back down as the sun set. I think our lives over the last two years have been a bit like that of Sisyphus in some respects. It's hard not to get caught up in the sense of uncertainty and even futility as we face the possibility of yet another round of government restrictions today. You may remember that I also spoke to you last term of Albert Camus, the French existentialist philosopher who used Sisyphus as an example of how we should all live our lives in order to attain happiness. It's not to say that we should spend our days doing pointless things and then undoing them each night. What Camus suggests is that we all, like Sisyphus, will face circumstances beyond our control, which seem frustrating and depressing. And that we all, like Sisyphus, should simply accept those things that we cannot control and work on maintaining our own sense of surety and purpose within the world. Camus asks the question, why does Sisyphus keep rolling the boulder up the hill each day? And he answers that we must imagine he does so because he is happy to, because he manages to find joy in that daily routine. So while it is possible to interpret the story of Sisyphus as a depressing one, it can also be seen as giving us a message of hope and purpose of how to maintain happiness in an uncertain world. Moving closer to home, I'd like to begin our assembly today with a karakia. It is traditional for Māori fishermen to offer up a prayer before embarking on a fishing trip. Many of these prayers ask for the sea to smooth out in front of them and for their journey to be an easy and successful one. But the prayer I'm going to share with you today does not do that. Instead, this prayer acknowledges that we cannot always know what is ahead of us, and we will almost certainly face challenges. In fact, the only certainty we have when embarking on a new journey is the knowledge that there will be uncertainty and challenges. And yet we can find strength in acknowledging that, in preparing ourselves to accept whatever happens with equanimity, and in realizing that while we can't control everything that happens to us, we can control our response to it. I'll read you a translation first so you can follow along with the karakia. Get ready for the westerly and be prepared for the southerly. It will be icy cold inland and icy cold on the shore. But the dawn will rise red-tipped on ice, on snow, on frost. Tihei mori ora. Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kānikina ki uta, kia mā ta rātara ki a tai. E hi ake ana te ātakura, he tio, he huka, he hauhunga. Tihei mauri ora. I want to acknowledge that we're sitting here today as a government announcement begins, and there are questions and uncertainties about what that announcement will bring. I would ask that you just try and put yourself in the here and now for this assembly. If our phones all beep in 20 minutes time with an emergency text that we're all going into lockdown, then our phones will all beep with an emergency text that we're all going into lockdown. If they don't, then they won't. We have taken the additional precaution of asking guests outside of our school bubble to stay away and join us instead via live stream today. 
So let us take this time to celebrate our community and our shared successes. I've met with Mrs. Patchett prior to this assembly, and she has asked Mr. Woods to stay outside and watch the press conference on our behalf. He will be coming in to let her know during the assembly whether there is going to be any form of lockdown or further restriction. And Mrs. Patchett will speak to you at the end of assembly today with clear information and instructions. So this year, in addition to our usual academic bar, bar awards, we've moved some prizes from our end of year senior prize giving to this assembly. Today we are going to recognize the efforts and successes of a number of students in a number of areas encompassing service, arts, and academic spheres. I would also like to acknowledge every student here who is not being presented with an award today, but who remains an integral part of the culture and the community and the atmosphere that makes me proud every day to be a part of St. Margaret's College. Thank you. We just begin our reflection on how wonderful we are this afternoon with Year 11 Awards. And I'd ask Ms. McDonald to assist Ms. Patchett in the presentation of these awards. And then girls, as you see your name appear on the screen behind me, please come down and stand to my right. And then as your name is called out, please come past and receive your award. Annie Erie, Anita Arbia, Henrietta Ainsley, and Catherine Babington. Annabelle Barnes, Ruby Barnett, Ella Bloy, Ali Booth, and Nish Brooks. Ivy Brown, Sam Campbell, Cassidy Causer, Marley Clarkson, and Georgia Conley. Monique Cosgrove, Jenna Davison, Victoria de Costa Bardi, Sky Den, and Jasmine Devine Smith. Kayla Donaldson, Haley Douglas, Caitlin Dufty, Poppy Aratus, and Stella Folds.
Sienna Fox, Violet Fulton, Jessica Ginn, Emily Gibb, and Scarlett Gordon. Haig, Elise Haig, Grace Hale, and Emily Harris. Maya Hartstonge, Lucy Horton, Michaela Hume, and Claudia Hundleby and Libby Hutchings. Holly Jacobs, Evie Johnson, Eva Johnston, Lucy Kearney, and Harriet Kinney. Grace Noyle, Mila Kotzikis, Mel Leverland, Petra Lewis, and Anna Mara. Emma Mason, Laura McDonald, Sophie McGee, Cleo McLeod, Antonia McPherson. Tess Morgan, Mika Neal, Alexandra Nicolau, and Bree O'Malley. Mayuko Oda, Jesse Penn, Alex Reese Thomas, and Ali Rogers.
Jessica Saunders, Lucy Sawyer, Charlotte Scott, and Aisha Scully. Sorrel Shand, Tessa Sitches, Lucille Smale, and Sasha, Sasha Stedman. Ashley Taken, Lauren Warren, Natalie Whitaker, and Hannah Wiley. And to conclude the Year 11 Awards, Zoe Yang and Ruby Young. Just give our Year 11 friends a large round of applause. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. And I'd now like to ask Ms. Vesti, um, the Year 12 Dean, to join us as we announce the Year 12 prizes. Polly Ainsley, Katie Buttle, Alana Court, Danielle Coles, and Alice Davidson. Francis Doherty, Hannah Elkington, Holly Fearclough, Sarah Gilman, and Emma Graham. Hannah Haddon, Charlotte Haycock, Lauren Healy, and Mari Henderson. Deanne Hermy, Siobhan Hoare, Julia Holmes, Georgina, Georgiana House, and Bridie James.
Amanda Zhang, Lily Jones, uh, Amy Kelly. Ella Kippenberger, Lucinda Kippenberger, Ashlyn Coase, and Harriet Lamb. Taya Laws, Sarah Ledley, Alex Lees, Ali Lowry, and Sahara McFarlane. Annabelle March, Yasmin Marsh, Sienna McEwen, and Neve McKenzie. Maddie Meats, Annalise Millard, Millie Mitchell, Cara Muschin, and Ha Nguyen. Lani Nolan, Pearl O'Brien, Emily O'Connor, and Emily O'Donnell. Jessica Pitt, Charlotte Preble, Tess Roberts, and Shari Ross. Grace Roxborough, Gracie Seto, Josie Seymour, Jordan Silcox, and Harriet Simpson.
Bonnie Smith, Bridget Smith, Eliza Smith, Zoe Smith and Bella Spear. Ophelia Staniford, Mizzy Surridge, Chloe van der Rey, Kate Van Peer, and Milky Von Sack Ogleson. Lucy Walker, Lily Webb, Holly Whitaker, and Sienna Wu. That concludes the Year 12 Awards. If we could um, show how impressed we are with another round of applause. <laughs> the Pass on our best wishes to Year 12 students as they progress to Level 3 and 13 IB next year. I now invite Ms Price to join us as we um, sadly give the last badge awards to our Year 13 students. Um, sadly with joy. No? <laughs> Joyously sadly? Lola Astell, Chloe Bale, Mila Ballin, Jessica Bassett and Georgia Buchan. Molly Campbell, Lulu Clark, Ava Coates, Lily Cochram, and Rhiannon Cutler. Rosa Davidson, Mimi Dyer, Piper Eder, Jessica England, and Amelia Evans. <laughs> Lucy Flint, Kirsty Fox. Jess Franks, Charlie Freeman, and Zoe Fulton. <laughs> Cadence Gann. Annabelle Goodwin, Holly Haig, 
Poppy Hamilton and Taylor Hardy. Caitlin Hill, Phoebe Jennings, Lucy Johnston, and Millie Kearney. Alessandra Kitley, Isabella Kotzikas, Soyun Kwon, Heather Lang, and Georgia Lassen. Maya Laws, Alexandra Lehman, Ali Lu, Isabella Mara, and Renee Martin. Grace McCone, Grace McKenna, Alice McLeod, Chloe McNabb and Claudia Meads. Anna Milner, Emily Milner, sorry, Anna Morris, Ella Munro, and Hannah Nakajo. <laughs> Henrietta Osborne, Marcy Panett, Noni Panyarachan, Charlotte Parker and Olivia Peter. <laughs> Lydia Pye, Caitlin Ray, Georgia Reed, and Belle Richards. Libby Rodder, Sophia Roth, Samantha Ross Murphy, Jasmine Russell, and Isabella S Isabel Scrimmager. Abby Smith, Piper Smith, Izzy Story, 
Maddie Thorley and Arabella Vanell. Lucy Wang, Caitlin Wickham, Tessa Wisby, and Sabrina Wong. Jessica Yockney, Yu Yu Zhang, and Nadia Zhao. That concludes the awards for Year 13, and we wish them all the best as they go on to even greater things. It's now my pleasure to introduce Danny Coles, who's going to sing, quite prophetically, after the storm blows through.
after the storm blows Dana, it is such a pleasure to be able to hear such wonderful talent, so thank you. It is my pleasure to award the Principal's Outstanding Learning Award for today. This, is, this award is made from teacher nominations about students who have impressed their teachers. And this award today is recognising outstanding diligence and effort across multiple subject areas and for a student who has made significant development in learning over the last couple of years. The recipient of the Principal's Outstanding Learning Award today is a Year 11 student. She has been nominated by her teachers in four different learning areas and here are some of the comments from her nominating teachers. She has made such an effort throughout the year in both practical and theory lessons. She is always well prepared for class and willing, willingly challenges herself. She has thrived in taking leadership opportunities within the class as well. She is one of the most conscientious students I've taught. She willingly asks for help when needed and always makes sure she understands the material being taught asking for clarification when she's unsure. She is engaged and has had a high level of achievement in this subject. All of her written work is comprehensive and of a high standard. She contributes with interest to the group and class discussions and is a fully engaged student. She works well with other students and is encouraging of others. Her effort in the recent internal assessments was outstanding and her response showed her incredible preparation and, and determination to excel. So I'm sure you will agree this has been an outstanding award and achievement and today that award goes to Asha Scully. So now I have the honour in presenting the service awards and I'd like to call down Lucy Johnston and Yanni Rutherford. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations, girls. We move now to the Performing Arts Awards. And we're very pleased to recognise this afternoon Zoe Yang, who wins the Alexandra Pettit Memorial Cup for Most Promising Chorister. Ruby Gilligan, the Calder Cup for Positive Achievement in Drama. Scarlett Gordon, the Matson Family Cup for Most Promising Emerging Dancer. And Nicola... Oh, sorry, and you use Zhang, the Nicola Dodwell Cup, for significant contribution to choral music.
We also recognise Amelia Lynn with the St Margaret's College Award for a significant contribution to instrumental music. Yanni Rutherford with the Fiona Dowie Cup for most improvement in drama or debating. Alexandra Lehman and Georgia Lassen are sharing the Shakespeare Cup for contribution to the staging of Shakespeare. Ali asked me if she had to be here today because she's busy with her IB exams. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to some academic awards um, that have been moved into this um, assembly today from prize giving. Milo O'Neill, an achievement in year 11 visual art for painting and printmaking. Lauren Warne, Achievement in Year 11 Visual Art, Photography and Design. Siobhan Hoare, Achievement in Year 12 Painting. Alana Court, Achievement in Year 12 Photography. And Georgiana House, the Shona Big Cup for Achievement in Year 12 Design. Done, girls. We're also presenting the Emily, Emily Harris with an achievement in Year 11 English Literature, Taya Laws with an achievement in Year 12 English Standard Level, Caitlin Wickham with an achievement in Year 13 IB English Standard Level, and Olivia Wells with the Story Essay Cup for Achievement in Creative Writing. Moving on to mathematics, Polly Jacob wins an award for an achievement in Year 11 Mathematics 112, Annabelle Barnes, an achievement in Year 11 Mathematics 115, and Sophia McKendry, an achievement in Year 11 Mathematics 115. Annabelle March wins an award for an achievement in Year 12 Mathematics 122. Caitlin Blair wins an achievement in Year 12 Mathematics 125. Deanne Hermy, an achievement in Year 12 IB Mathematics Analysis and Interpretation Standard Level. And Milky Vongsakolkasim, achievement in Year 12 IB Mathematics Analysis and Approaches Standard Level. Moving on then to the next category in our academic awards today, we recognise someone who has achieved the highest level of recognition available to girls in the senior school at St Margaret's College, which is the right to wear the red honours blazer. Oh, sorry. My fault. Rewind. We also recognise Caitlin Rhee with an achievement in Year 13 Statistics, Heather Lang, Lang, an achievement in Year 13, IB Analysis and Interpretation Standard Level, and Yu Yu Zhang, an achievement in Year 13, IB Analysis and Approaches Standard Level. Well done, girls. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> well done, girls. Such incredible achievements. We now move on to the awarding of a red blazer. Um, the honours award, the honours blazer is awarded in one of three categories and recognises that a student has achieved outstanding results in the field of academia, sport or arts. It's rare for a student to receive this before year 13 and rarer still for the achievement to be awarded before year 12. But today it is my great pleasure to award academic honours to a year 11 student I invite Claudia Handelby to join us and receive her red blazer. Claudia. 
at this point in the year before external exams have begun, Claudia has already achieved enough level one excellence credits to qualify for an NCEA certificate endorsement with excellence and a silver tie award in term one of next year. In addition to this, she has achieved high distinctions in the French reading and listening comprehension sections of the ALC exam, a place in the top 100 students of the highly competitive Otago maths exam, a distinction in the Kiwi English exam competition, and combined first place in the South Island Ethics Olympiad, and just casually won the National Sheila Wynn essay competition in 2021, while racking up 11 hours of academic service time to the school. Would you please join me in congratulating Claudia? <laughs> Thank you, and we now welcome Lulu Clark for another musical performance. Lulu is singing When We Were Young by Adele. Everybody loves the things you do From the way you talk To the way you move And everybody here is watching you Cause you feel like home You're like a dream come true But if by chance you're here alone can I have a moment before I go? Cause I've been by myself all night long Hoping you're someone I used to know You look like a movie You sound like a song My God, this reminds me when we were young Let me photograph you in this light In case it is the last time that we might Be exactly like we were before we realized We were sad of getting old It made me so restless It was just like a movie It was just like a song I was so scared to face my fears Cause nobody told me That you'd be here And I swear you moved overseas That's what you said When you left me You still look like a movie you still sound like a song My God, this reminds me Of when we were young Let me photograph you in this light In case it is the last time that we might Be exactly like we were before we realized We were sad of getting old It made me so restless it was just like a movie It was just like a song When we were young When we were young When we were young When we were young It's hard to admit that Everything just takes me back to a new when you were there And a part of me keeps holding on Just in case it hasn't gone I guess I still care Do you still care? It was just like a movie It was just like a song My God, this reminds me 
when we were young. Let me photograph you in this light in case it is the last time that we might be exactly like we were before we realized we were sad of getting old and made me so restless. Oh, I'm so so restless it was just like a movie it was just like a song when we were young when we were young <laughs> Lily, that was phenomenal. I've been told once or twice that I look a bit like Adele, but I cannot sing like that, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well done. Okay, we now have um, so a few more awards um, to go. We are going to welcome, first of all, um, the winners, or oh, our, our team, it's Margaret's team this year who participated in the international conference um, for work, future problem solving and gained a fourth place in the world. It was pretty impressive. Um, so I'd like to welcome to receive their um, plaque and medals, Cara Birch, Evie Johnson, Mel Leatherland and Emma Mason. Congratulations again, girls. Not to be outdone by our future problem solvers, we also have a team of um, future psychiatrists who've participated in the New Zealand Brain Bee competition and um, won the national, um, brought home a trophy for the winning school for St. Margaret's. And that team was consisted of Claudia Handelby, Milo Neal, Emily Harris, and Tessa Sitches. So congratulations, Claudia and Milo. Emily, unfortunately, can't be with us. And I'm going to ask Tessa to also accept... I'm going to ask Tessa to also accept the individual trophy for the top individual performance and a red rose for her performance at a national level. Congratulations. <laughs> While the future psychiatrists were busy in that sphere, we had a future politician participate in the Model European Union um, delegation for 2021 and receive a Best Delegate Award. Congratulations to Alexandra Nicola. <laughs> Girls are making me feel exhausted just standing here reading this all. Um, we also recognise today students who have been awarded their Trinity College London acting certificates, receiving grade six acting with distinction, Petra Lewis and Emily Pitts, and receiving grade seven acting with merit, Claudia Handelby. And our next award is for mathematics. Achieving a distinction in the Australian mathematics competition, congratulations to Hyun Jung Lee.
And our final award for today is one that is very close to my heart. I actually, in, I believe it was 2008, when I was working at Christ College, was the person who first purchased that trophy and um, coached the first team to have their names engraved on it. It is the annual Christ College versus St. Margaret's College Showcase Debate Trophy. And this year, I'm very pleased to say that we have kept it at St. Margaret's. And I'd like to welcome to collect the trophy, Alexandra Lehman, Phoebe Jennings, and Yoni Rutherford. Congratulations to all our winners. I think that um, outnumbers the number of times Christ College has got their name on that cup, so that's good. It's nice to be able to defend it and, and take us into the majority of years having won it. Um, I've got a wee speech prepared uh, just on leadership and some of the challenges uh, that we face as leaders, because as our senior school girls, you are leaders. Uh, in many ways, that's what prompted me to send that email to you this morning. For those of you who managed to get around to it, I'm sure your inboxes are, are bursting. But I do, and the school really relies on you to set the tone uh, for the rest of the school. You don't necessarily appreciate how much your little sisters do look up and gauge their reaction to changing events based on your reaction. So thank you for maintaining a sense of calm and a positive attitude and continuing to be optimistic in the face of uncertainty because you will be the ones that will be tuned in most to what's happening out there. But uh, passed a note earlier to say that we are remaining at level two. So that's good news that the family or the, the two people that were of interest who tested positive for COVID live in Bishopdale. Um, there's just three houses households at the moment that are considered close contacts. They've already been a self-isolating uh, the government will publish some locations of interest, so I'd encourage us all to check those, see whether or not, because it, 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 I understand that the one case may have been out and about in the community for a week, so it'll be important for us all to maybe just check and make sure that we weren't at those locations of interest. And if at any time you're not feeling well, get yourself tested. I think the next couple of days will be pretty critical uh, in the Christchurch and wider area just to see whether there has been any transmission. But good news, staying at level two, so for the time being, no change to our circumstances. Um, look, the, the events of the last two years and, and now again in the last probably 24 hours have certainly put leaders from all industries under the spotlight, uh, providing plenty of examples of both poor and best practice for the world to critically analyse. And while a global pandemic is an extraordinary event, crises and situations of stress and pressure generally do re reveal a lot about a person's capability for leadership. Leaders and organisations that have responded well are those that have stayed true to their values and mission and used these as a compass when the landscape continued to shift and change. Something we've been hearing a lot about uh, and for a long time, but which the pandemic has really brought home, is that to be resilient and successful, contemporary organisations must be agile. That is, an able to reassess, to adapt their plans, to regularly experiment with ideas. And to achieve this, we, we have to actually relax into it and embrace change and not be beholden to old ways of doing things. Being rigid about plans made doesn't always work and certainly doesn't always best serve an organisation. Just as this was the case for businesses over the last couple of years, it's also been the case for schools. There came a realisation that not only was the old way no longer possible, but also that it wouldn't provide the best outcomes when it came to your well-being, your relationships, and our provision for you of quality learning. Our teachers, I must say, have been incredibly creative in the initiatives that they've devised. And crucial to this was their knowledge that if an approach or an idea did not work out the first time, that was okay. Failure, in many ways, was as much a feature of 2021 as was success. And with each small failure, we learned what needed to be done to recalibrate an idea, to flip an approach to what we were doing and make it work better. Having a sense of humour, I guess, also helps to keep things in perspective. As a leader, having too big an ego and wanting to maintain things you've introduced previously or holding tight onto something just because that was the way that it had always been done does not bode well. 
In high-performing teams, there just isn't room for an outsized ego or for just one star player. Being able to delegate, to trust others, to value their expertise, to collaborate and group together people with varying skills to find ways to move forward is critical. Encouraging and fostering diversity is incredibly important as different viewpoints and ways of seeing things lead to enhanced problem solving and creativity. Also critical is valuing and utilizing different people's strengths in order to achieve the best possible outcome. For example, a creative person might have a great idea about how to do something, but to execute it requires the checks and balances of people who are strong on fine detail, logistics maybe, and risk. Recognizing these respective skill sets and bringing these people together to achieve an outcome is the prerogative of a strong leader. It's also important for those in leadership positions to be able to foresee, at least to the best of their ability, how people are likely to react and respond to certain situations. Empathy and compassion are essential to this. Throughout the past year, we've all needed an acute awareness of how members of our family, members of our teams and our community were coping so that the whole enterprise, whether that's a school or an NZX listed company, could function well. And those qualities that I've described, empathy, compassion, capacity to manage unexpected disruption, delegation, collaboration, not having too big an ego, being more interested in the outcome and the people around you, and being flexible and receptive, these are all traits traditionally associated with women. They're qualities that you, our next generation of leaders, need to see as valuable and to nurture in yourselves. Leadership is one of the key capabilities we aim to instill in all of you during your time at St Margaret's. We might feel that the pandemic is testing our limits, but at the same time, it is helping to develop our resilience, our empathy, our ability to sit comfortably with uncertainty. And these are all important attributes for you to develop in preparation for your lives beyond the school gate. Ones we hope will guide you through uncharted waters and on to great success. So go well, are you 13s? And for the rest of you, thank you for continuing to step up in to that leadership position across the wider life of the school. I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for the role models that you provide to your younger sisters and for those skills that you can continue to develop every day uh, that you're here at St Margaret's. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mrs Patchett. Um, girls, our next lesson begins at 2.30, so I'm going to ask staff to leave and then I'll dismiss girls and we can have a short break before going on to your last period of the day. Thank you very much.